Hi, my name is Sofia Nilsson and I work as a software designer in IFS R&D projects. I will give you a short demonstration of the new job rate management functionality in IFS. The main driver in this project has been the North America construction industries, where regulations for union agreements and Davis-Bacon prevailing wage rates are used. This is however applicable for other scenarios where you need a detailed job cost breakdown. I will show you the rate agreement, the time reporting with additional parameters, the job cost calculation, and the job cost details, which is the result of the calculation. The rate agreement contains the rules for rate determination. They can be union rate agreements, prevailing wage rate agreements, which is depending on, for example, location, and also individual rate agreements, including, for example, fringe benefits. This is a union rate agreement, and it consists of a basic rate that is a direct rate, meaning it will be paid out directly to the employee, and also some additions such as, for example, health and welfare and pension, which are indirect. It also consists of an overtime compensation, which is calculated as a percentage on the basic rate. The parameters in the rate agreement is dynamic and it is possible to determine per company. The employee for whom I will calculate the job cost details is called John and he is a journeyman electrician working in a project. He is connected to this union rate agreement and we need to complete the last week's time report for John first. In this week, we need to complete the Friday time reporting. I am adding a project activity and a report code on that activity. There are additional parameters connected to the job cost calculation. And in this case, we will have the location defaulted because this project is set to use prevailing wage. Other parameters that will matter in my case is, for example, the report code and the resource. Now this week is completed and I will continue by doing the job cost calculation. The calculation is done per company and it is possible to limit the calculation on the job cost transaction type and the employee selection templates. The dates for previous week is already defaulted into these dates. I will do the calculation for the projects but for all the employees. The result I am getting is the job cost details. Let's filter out this on the first day in the period to get a better overview. The transaction now has eight job cost detail rows connected to it, which is one per match it got in the rate agreement. The Monday was reported on our project, which is not using the prevailing wage, why the result is based on the union rate agreement. That can be viewed in this column. All the created job cost details are now also possible to use as input to a third party payroll system and it is possible to use the calculated values for compliance reporting purposes. If we go to the product transactions, and filter out the relevant period, We can now see that the job costing updated flag is set to yes and the total sum of the details has updated the internal price on the transactions. The sum on the Friday is different because we used the prevailing wage in this case. This concludes the session about job rate management. Thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe the IFS YouTube channel.